Hi, I'm Shad, and I'm your computer teacher for today with Operating Systems. Over the decades, computers have improved dramatically in their speed and capacity, and along with that comes a requirement that the operating systems that they use also reach the challenge. And so in this video, I'm going to talk to you about all of the jobs that your operating system has to do to make your computer run safely and effectively. So where have you seen an operating system before? Well, if you have a computer, you likely have Microsoft Windows installed on it. That's an operating system. Or if you have a Macintosh, it looks a little different, but it is also an operating system that does very similar things. More technical people prefer to use things like Linux, which is an absolutely free operating system, but more complex to use. Now let's talk about all of the hats that your operating system has to wear and to do it right all of the time. The first thing that your operating system does is a concept called enforced sharing. So nobody likes to share, but the programs that your computer uses all share some common resources. So what kind of resources? Well, there's memory and there's a CPU and there's disk space, among other things. And all of these resources can be monopolized. And if they don't work properly, your computer will perform badly. So when you look in your task manager, you're going to see some of these resources and the statistics about them. So this is the task manager for Windows, and you can see that my computer has 85% of its memory occupied. And one program in particular is occupying most of that memory. So the operating system keeps track of who is using what, and it might shut some things down if they get in the way. The second thing that an operating system does is called interprocess communication. Now, a process is simply a program, like a video game. And if you were to have two programs that were talking to each other on a network or on the same computer, that is an interprocess communication. So we're used to playing live board games, for example. In code, this is what it looks like. They're called pipes and sockets. And so this code on the left is opening up a pipe and it is sending text to the program on the right. And so the operating system manages those communications. And so if you're a programmer, this will be something that you'll have to deal with. Now, if you have the right tools, you can also open up things like a sniffer and see the communications going between different processes. And so this program called IO Ninja shows exactly that. It shows streams of data that are going through pipes during programming. Another way that programs are using communications is sometimes through what's called shared memory. So let's say that in our memory, we have a block of shared memory, and then in a second block of memory called process A, and then another with B. So if we wanted to communicate with each other, process B could write some data, such as a string or some integers into the shared area, and then process A could read from there and vice versa. And so shared memory is monitored and managed by the operating system. A third job that the operating system has to do is have an interface to the hardware. So hardware can be anything from your monitor or to your sound or to your mouse or to external video cameras. Those are things that your operating system can manage. And we're used to seeing that in areas like the device manager or in our preferences or control panel, where you can change the options, the size, and the speed of pieces of hardware. So as you manage the display properties, for example, you should be aware that you're running a program called a device driver. If you were to look in this example, you would see that there's a special camera. And if we were to right click on it and choose the properties menu, we would be able to configure different options for that camera. Maybe it's brightness or maybe the resolution. To make that work, you have to have extra software that the operating system manages. It's called a driver. And so in the old days, you either got a disk or you downloaded it from the internet and had to install it. Now drivers present a big concern for security for an operating system. You want to make sure that they're both up to date and that they've been certified. And so you can see from this program that it is noticing that every single driver that is running on this computer has been certified by Microsoft. And of course, Microsoft is the company that owns Windows. And so you want to make sure that you have certified drivers 
before you just accept everything and install it. Another job of an operating system is user authentication. We've all been presented with a login screen, of course, but the first thing you do when you turn your computer on is that it asks you who you are. And so the reason it does that is because we're going to track your usage and your permissions for everything that the computer can do. So for example, if I were to go into the user accounts in my system panel, I would be able to see who has been authorized to log into my computer. Along with that, I can grant them permissions. In this case, you can see that this person has been assigned to a group called administrators, which means that they can probably manage and configure everything on the computer. If I were not an administrator, I would have to get permission. Now you can see here that in computer management, sometimes there are a lot of users on a system, like a computer network server. And we have different groups that are allowed to manage and access different things. And so this is the job of a system administrator is to make sure that all the permissions are correct. The fifth job for an operating system is to protect the memory. Memory protection, what does that mean? Well, first of all, memory is the RAM that you install on your computer. It's these chips that store memory while the computer's turned on and then are erased from their contents when the power is turned off. So it's not long-term storage here. This is the short-term storage where your active programs reside. So if we were to look at a program as it's loaded into RAM from the hard disk, you would see that there is a section called the process control block. Then there would be a section of memory called the executable instructions, or some people would call that the program itself. And then your program has data. So if you're keeping track of a list of people or the status of a game, that is the data. And then as your program grows in size, you might add new features as it runs. That's called the stack, it's the dynamic data. And then we come to an ending point where other people's memory is now going to be active. So the operating system's job is to keep your program in bounds, like inside of a small sandbox. So it would give you a lower bound for where its memory address cannot go any lower. And then they would have a point called the stack begin where the dynamically created memory is assigned and the operating system would feed you that as long as it has capacity. Once it gets to a certain point though, it's no longer going to allow your program to get any larger. And of course that's configurable. We want to keep your program away from other people's. Inside of a computer program are branch instructions. These are the loops and the if statements and the conditions. And so we want to make sure that any branch instructions tell the computer, the CPU, to execute the next valid instruction. We wouldn't want to jump outside of our own sandbox. You can also tell a program to only reference the data that belongs to it or to something that is in the dynamically created stack. But if you were to see an instruction in your program that is a reference that goes out of bounds, then you have a big problem. So a reference to a, a memory address that is out of bounds of where it should be is obviously a security problem, and your operating system is supposed to take care of that. Similar to memory, we have a file system. So a file system is what you find when you save items to the hard drive. And so this is the long-term storage when your computer is turned off. So these are the files, these are the programs that you install. And so we want to make sure that the people that copy files or delete files actually have permission to do so. And so that is part of the operating system's job is to keep track of where things are stored and who owns them. So if you were to look in your file explorer, you would be used to seeing all those yellow folders. So those are directories and each directory has its own permissions. So some places you're allowed to put things and some places you are not, depending on how the administrator has given you privileges. So if you wanted to, you could right click on a folder and choose its properties. And then there you are allowed to grant permissions to other people, whether it's on your computer or on your network, to access those files. And so you can see for this user, the administrator has full access for the allow check mark is on every single option. So there is nothing that is restricted for this person. So an operating system has essentially six main jobs to do. If you'd like to learn about more things such as memory management, let's take a look at the next video that's coming up of how we can schedule memory and how we can use virtual memory.
My name is Shad, and if you like what you're learning here, make sure you subscribe or come to class with me at Grand Canyon University, where I teach in Phoenix, Arizona. We'll see you in the next video.